Hi, my name is EJ Massa. I've always enjoyed a nice, fresh ginger beer. So let's make one. I stole this recipe from City Studding's YouTube channel. Like I always say, good artists borrow, great artists steal. Like for example, here's a Mona Lisa that I painted. We'll start with grating two ounces of fresh ginger. I'm not even gonna bother peeling it. Ah, smells like sipping ginger ale when your stomach is upset. Is, is that supposed to be a pleasant sense memory? To give this brew a little depth, I'll peel some lemon zest. I dumped about a half gallon of water into a large pot. Threw the gray ginger in there, the lemon zest, and then a small squeeze of lemon for a tad more acidity, but not too much acidity. I add four cups of sugar and stirred it around, and then turned the heat on the burner. I got the brew up to boiling, then turned off the heat, and let that ginger tea steep for around 15 minutes. I strained out all the large bits with a strainer, and let that sweet ginger tea come down in temperature so it doesn't kill the yeast. And then I poured that tea into my gallon jug. Now we have to turn this sweet ginger tea into booze. We have to. God put me on this planet for two things, to get drunk and make ribs. And my blood alcohol level is lowering by the second. So I'm using this yeast because it's the yeast I have. If I didn't have this yeast, I'd probably just use bread yeast. Use whatever yeast you like. I put about half the packet in and gave the jug a good shaky shake. Poured in some fresh filtered water to fill the jug up to the neck and shook it with a cap on again. Then I'll take a specific gravity reading to see what I'm starting with and it looks like a gravity reading of 1.080 which seems pretty good. Remember the specific gravity will tell you the amount of sugar that's in the liquid which in turn will tell you the potential percent alcohol in that brew. I like to take a reading in the beginning so that if something happens along the way I know how to react accordingly. You technically don't have to do this step, you can just follow a recipe and hope for the best, but if something goes wrong, you might not know what the problem is or how to proceed. It also helps if you take notes. I have this lovely Mario uh, notebook right here, and for example, five days after I mixed the brew, I took a reading and got a specific gravity of 1.068, and if I plug that into that formula here, it's a percent alcohol of around 1.5. This ginger beer, I'm aiming for around 3 to 4 percent alcohol so that, you know, you have some leftover sweetness and it's not too strong. So now I know it'll take another roughly 5 days, a total 10 days, to get that other 1.5 percent alcohol to total around 3 percent alcohol. And I have that all written down, so if a year from now I'm feeling gingery, I can look back at my notes and I can see what worked and what didn't. So yes, here's my brew with the airlock in place. And it sat in my spooky basement for 10 days. Actually, I cleaned up my basement, so it looks kind of nice. I built a set down here, um, but I only cleaned it up slightly. I won't turn that camera around because I don't want the FBI knowing what else I have down here. Like, comment, and subscribe if you're the FBI. And yes, 10 days later, I took a reading and got 1.042, which gives me a percent alcohol of 4.9%, which is a little higher than I expected, but I'm not going to say no to more alcohol. So now I'm going to cold crash it in the fridge for a few days. Basically what I'm doing is using the cold to stun the fermentation, because if I didn't do that, it would just keep fermenting until dry, which I don't want to happen. Maybe if I was making ginger meat or ginger wine, I'd want it to be a little more dry, but I'm going to use the fridge to stop the fermentation. Let the particles sink to the bottom, then I'll rack that liquid off the lease into a new vessel. And that's what I did. Used the racking wand and racked it into a new jar and stirred the brew gently to make sure it was properly degassed. I forgot to mention that I did sterilize all my equipment with the star sand solution. And I'll put a link in the description below to that star sand and a lot of the equipment that I use. Now, let's go to a much more scraggly EJ from the past. Before I go any further, I'm going to try it to make sure I didn't make some sort of skunked abomination. Oh. Oh, that's really nice. So refreshing. A nice ginger taste. It tastes like a flat ginger ale. Oh, the ginger flavor is, is just perfect. It's not too strong, but it's gingery. Um, it's got a brightness to it, which I think is from the lemon zest. I think this is going to be great. 
During the bottling process, I'm going to attempt to carbonate the brew by adding one ounce of priming sugar, which is really just table sugar. And I stir that in until it was all incorporated. I bought a bunch of these swing top bottles from Amazon because I like the swing top. It's very convenient. And then I used a bottling wand to rack the ginger beer into the bottles and then close the swing tops up nice and tight. And that will go into my basement for like a week. A week later, I opened the cap and felt quite a bit of gas come out, so I think it's ready to pasteurize. Pasteurization is the process of killing off the yeast in the bottles so that it stops fermentation and it lasts longer on the shelf. I'll put the bottles in a large pot. I'm using the insert for my eight quart instant pot. Then I'll fill the pot with cold water to make sure the level goes up to the neck of the bottle. Then I'll take the bottles out to heat up the water on the burner to around 185 degrees Fahrenheit. Then I'll carefully lower the bottles back in and set a timer for 10 minutes, which should be enough time to kill off all the yeast. As a side note, I did keep one bottle aside because this is my first time carbonating in a bottle and I wasn't sure exactly how long it would take. So if these bottles didn't properly carbonate, I can test with that one and then I can write down all of my results in this notebook so I know uh, roughly how long it'll take. After the 10 minutes are up, I'm gonna take these out and let them come back to room temperature before chilling them. You don't want these to go from scalding hot to the fridge and cause an explosion. The only explosions I do are intentional. Like, comment, and subscribe if you're the FBI. I chilled it in the fridge overnight, and well, it's snowy, and it's cold, and I could use a pick-me-up, so let's try out this gingery drink. Take it away, caveman EJ. First off, it's very clear. It's a very interesting color. <laughs> um, probably not as fizzy as I'd like, but we'll see how it tastes. Mmm. Very good. Yeah, I could use a little more carbonation, but this is very good. It's so refreshing. I think I'd have a little more ginger, maybe. One week and haircut later. This is one uh, ginger beer that I let uh, let ferment for another uh, week in the bottle, and the carbonation is way better. Way more refreshing. Very good. I recommend people do this. So there we go. Now I know how it's done. I have it all documented in my book and I also painstakingly filmed it. So future EJ can recreate this brew. Really the whole point of this YouTube series is a way for me to remember my recipes and you get to watch as a bonus. And that's more true than you know. Oh, and I hope you enjoyed the new set. The basement down here was a room of disaster of Jonathan Hunt level proportions. And I'm glad I was able to clean it up. And you know, I got the uh, a beer and barbecue sign. It's hard to read. Um, I put those foam squares in the back. I glued them to the wall because as a YouTuber, I'm legally obligated to do so. And then there's the arcade, which has nothing to do with brewing or barbecue but it's just the weird flex that I wanted to do. I've always wanted a space like this to work in and there's a, a desk right there that I can do all my editing and also I don't have to film on my chilly three season porch anymore. I hope you enjoy it and that's all for now. Until next time, bye.